welcome back to Tell Samira. Thank you for all of my subscribers. I really thank you for sticking in with me for over the last two years. Uh, if you have any suggestions on what I should talk about, mental health, uh, spiritual realm of narcissism, personality disorders, I can do it from both angles. I can combine it. Just let me know what you're thinking about. Uh, if it's outside of my scope, I'll let you know. This video I haven't titled yet, but I want to say that beware, and I said this before, but I guess this is my follow-up, beware of the narcissist or any toxic people that you have cut off because they are totally looking for a way back in. And I say this is because I've listened to other people's channel, I've listened, looked at my life, and I said, oh my God, I'm not the only one going through this. I don't know if this is the season of their coming back. But all I know is that they are. And what it makes me think of from a spiritual perspective that something as awesome is about to happen in my life and about to happen in your life. And these people who are listening to these evil, wicked, demonic spirits, they're chatting to each other and going to, going to each person, telling them what's going on about to happen in your life. That's just my theory. And now they realize that you're not the same person. You're not weak as you used to be. You're not as naive as you used to be. And now they're coming back to see if, if they can get away in. They've been watching you on creating fake pages. They got family members and your friends who you think you're tight with. And you may suspect they're a flying monkey, but you're not sure. They're going back to report about your videos. I got them watching me pretending they like me and then go back and tell the narcissist that I'm making videos about them. You know, it, it, it comes with the territory, you know. So, you know, they're watching you and they're reporting back on you and they're all coming together. They got notes, my little, my little notebook here. They get, they're taking notes all together and coming back in a little um, Zoom meeting, a little go-to meeting and coming back to review notes to see what they can do about you. You know, they're not changed. They still wicked, but they realize since they couldn't get you alone, you know, from their own methods that they got to get strength from one another and now they got to try to come and attack you as a force. Reason I say that is, is because I got a message from my sister saying that my mother was having um, some, she got this big tumor, non-cancerous thing on her forehead. This thing is so messy because over the years, people have asked her about it because it was getting bigger. When people talk about it, she would go off on them, no matter who they were, to get them to shut up about the thing. So nobody was going to talk about it because people were too afraid to say anything because she's going to go off and cuss you out. So people backed off. But then over the years, she started bringing it up, talking about she needed an MRI, a CAT scan, and this and this. But she was going to different family members telling them she didn't have the money, her insurance didn't cover it. So she would tell one relative it cost this much amount. Then she would tell another relative it cost another amount. See, normally that would work because I guess, what is that, triangulation, where different family members weren't talking. My mother was like the go-between and she was the one controlling and pulling all the strings. But when I started getting a bit smarter, I started calling my sisters and calling other people. Have you talked to mother about this? And did she saying this? It cost this much. They're like, no, she told me this. It cost this much. So this is how I started really realizing that about all of these lies that had to do with this huge bump on her head. And then even I had a roommate at the time. And when I first moved in, I was like, yeah, my mom is saying this and this and this. She needs this and this. But then all of a sudden, my mother would stop talking about it and it was off limits. Then she'll wait for like a year or some months uh, uh, go by. And then here she goes, bringing it up again. Like she had never brought it up in the past. And then talking about money she needed for it. And even my roommate said, Samira, you don't see this routine, this pattern. Every couple of years, you keep coming to me, telling me about this bump. Nothing's been resolved. All you keep saying is she just keeps asking for more and more money about this. There's no proof to this. And I started thinking about it. My friend was like, is there a possibility she's lying? And I was like, mother, yeah, she's wicked, but lying about the bump? What? So I started putting it together and over the years kept collecting more information. And I came to the conclusion that something wasn't right about this bump. So fast forward to 2022 and this with this bump has been a, an ongoing issue since about 2008 but now it's 2022 so i get a text message from my sister saying hey want to respect your boundaries but want to let you know that mom something about this bump is going on it's looking serious and at first i'm like oh my god what 
And then I had to think about it. And I want to be clear that, oh, my God wasn't like, oh, I should have made it right. Oh, I should have did that. I was just like, oh, she could have died. And my, the thing was is that I did have thoughts of care because the, the times up until age five when I was the only child before I was discarded was very great. And I will never take that away from her. And then still over the years, there was sometimes when the narcissistic piece would move away for a minute or two out of the day then that was a brief piece of joy. So I did have those thoughts flash, but it was never a regret. And I can say that, that I'm happy that happened because I know some people have said to me, well, if something happens to your mom, you're going to be devastated. And you're going to win. Nothing of uh, that crossed my mind. It was just like, oh my God, you know, I hope she's okay. It, you know, I, I had no remorse of what I did. I didn't wish I could have changed anything because um, even though she's not dead, she was who she was until the end. Like I said, not even long ago, she had posted on my um one of my videos. Like I said, one of the flying monkeys told her I made the video and, and she told me I was mental and that's a form of spiritual attack. That's putting a curse on somebody. So this person was still willing to curse me even in her older age. And that's something she had been doing since I was five years old verbally putting curses on me, telling me people wouldn't want me, I wouldn't succeed in school, I would never be this, I would never be that, that is detrimental and that is cursing. So up until that day, she made her bed and now she has to lie in that bed, unfortunately. And I don't care what people think about that because that's the truth. Because people want to be like, oh, a person could be dying or a person could be dead. You should change life. It's not, no, life is too short to allow the wicked to continue to go in there on their way as in receive no punishment in order for people to learn to stop a behavior and that what they were doing were wrong they need to have a consequence a negative consequence that needs to be followed upon and so i feel honored after a while i feel honored that i was chosen by god to be one to say to these people that no it stops here you will now be held accountable for what you have done it is not okay what you have done. Yes, people around you may make you think that you're okay, but no, I'm you, the one that you targeted is now looking at you and saying it was not okay. You are now being judged for the things that you have done. And now who am I to stand in the way of God's wrath? I, I, I refuse to be because you know what I'm not, and I'm not just saying it's just about other people. I'm saying it about me because any consequences that I make and when I go in the wrong direction, there's a tap on my head, a hand, a kick in my butt, something in this universe will let me know I'm going the wrong way. So if I have to be held accountable for the mistakes that I make, and the mistakes that I made, who am I to block somebody else from what's going on in their life? So going back to this bum thing, I don't know if it's true because one, my sister, love her, but anybody who's, con who's connected to the narcissist, you still have to be a little bit, um, you know, hands off a bit because they may be a flying monkey knowingly and also unknowingly. Because if you know the narcissist, you know what type of people they like to pick up on. They like to pick up on people that they consider weak. They like to um, be close to people who they can manipulate, who will do their bidding for them, report back to them. And these people who they choose, some of them can be just as narcissistic, but the ones that are not can be very gullible and they want to be liked and loved by this narcissist and doted upon because maybe when the target was around, they didn't get all that love and affection. So now that it's available, they want to go and get whatever crumbs is being tr trickled down to them and they want to run to that, which I can't blame them. I was there at one point, but so... Um, I do respect my sister did ask me did I want to know and at first I debated with that and I was like yeah you can tell me what was going on and then she had told me that my mother I don't know if she was going through surgery or something was going to happen with the thing but it wasn't maybe looking too good fast forward I didn't hear anything it was maybe two three weeks later she texted me said can you give me a call I have an update and I decided not to reply not to be mean to my sister, but I decided I wanted to protect my peace. I don't need to know what it is. I figure like this, if there's something very wrong going on that's, um, it'll be on Facebook, your mom passed, hey, condolences, something like that that will let me know. I don't want to get myself pulled back into something that been going on since 2008. It's always been some great emergency about it. Then after a few weeks, it's nothing again. Then another a huge emergency. 
you know, I don't have time for that because I feel like I'm in a productive place in my life and I don't. And what I say about watching the narcissist, so I have another narcissist family member who likes to use God as a disguise for narcissism. However, um, very self-righteous individual, uh, some months back has sent me a uh, message. Hey, I'm going to buy your book. Congrats. And I thought I had this person blocked, but apparently not on messenger. Ugh. So I'm like, oh, okay, thank you. And I'm like, thank you. Because like, what do you want me to say? These people, they expect you to just go crazy. Like, oh my God, you might read my book. Uh, let me get excited. But I'm like, oh, this is not the old Sam. And I can see that these people don't change. They still use the same tactics. And I'm just like, okay, thank you. Because if it was me and I was a narcissist and I was trying to get somebody to be a victim again, I would have actually bought their books, the, the paperback, a, cup, a couple of them. And I would have sent them pictures, you know, like these aren't my books, but these are just some books I happen to have. I would have sent them pictures like, oh my God, here I am with your books. They're so great. Oh my God. And I, and I would have took like video of me going around the city, passing out their books and telling people to leave reviews on um, Amazon. So I'm just telling you, if you're one of my ex-narcs um, or any personality disorder person I know, that that's how you should do it. You know, send me a video and with proof of you telling people to rate my book online and buy my book. That's the way you do it. Not coming talking about you're going to buy my book, going to buy. Like, you may not even buy it. So, I'm not about to get happy. I'm not about to prepare you a royal hero cookie. What do you really expect from me? Come on. So, that was the end of that. So, um, this week I get a call from the friend that, our uh, ex-friend that I made the video about, the narcissistic friend, the one that goes by Princess. Uh, she calls me. I got a new phone, so I guess it didn't bl block to this new phone, even though it's the same number. Anywho, I answered the phone. She's like, hey, and I immediately knew who it was. I said, who is this? She's like, how are you? And I said, who is this? How are you? I said, goodbye. And then she's like, oh, 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 stop, 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 stop. Uh, somebody called me and said that your mom is um like on her deathbed and she's living with somebody else or not, something like that. And then, and I was like, okay, thank you. I'll look into it. Bye. And that was it. And I hung up and blocked it, blocked her number. And so my thing is this. I was like, how would somebody call her and say that? Who could have called her and said this? Then I remembered. The narc family member that reached out to me on Messenger is the prince is Princess's cousin, and that's how I met Princess. So that let me know the narc family member is still messy because she knows that I don't mess with Princess because they talk to each other. Because I cut off the narc family member first, and when I was living with Princess. The NARC family member kept calling Princess, telling Princess how she was trying to be a good family member to me and like a mother to me. And she was trying to mold me. So, you know, they linked up. That's when me and Princess started having problems because she realized I, at the time, had been susceptible to one another NARC so that I was fair game for her as well. So that's how that landed. So I still know they're both toxic. Because first, the family member shouldn't be telling my business to somebody she know I don't mess with. And why she's calling to California and she live all the way in Connecticut telling my business to somebody. Messy. Messy. So no, she hasn't changed. Princess, if she was so concerned about my mom, she should have started the conversation about my mom instead of the dumb, how are you? How you doing? Mm-mm. She was hoping that I was about to be stupid and she was about to start the whole thing over. So it's just so pathetic. So what I'm going to just say is guard your peace because these people are on the lookout for anybody, any way in that they can get. They're pairing up with, on you. They're trying to come and get you and attack you. They want you to still be stupid for them, falling for the same tricks. The thing is, continue to block them even if they come, from you, come for you in a different direction. Don't have anything to do with these people if you can help yourself. Sometimes it works. Sometimes if you're doing... um. 
if you sh share custody or something with people, you can't get away with the, these people. So do whatever you can do to the best of your ability to protect your peace. Like I said, I had another narc um, incident. I won't go in far with that. It was just a, one of the situations where you can't get away from the person. And this person said something to me. I thought about it and I went back and I said, look, this is what was said. This should not be said. This is what should happen again in the future because some of these people are bullies. And I tell you, if you allow them to, they will make your life hell. But what I've learned is even if it's in a job situation, sweetie, I'm going to say something. I'm not because these people feed off you being weak and fearful, fearful you're going to lose your job, fearful you're going to lose your kids fearful that you will lose something because they know that people hate to lose things and that's the biggest thing they hold over us is fear so when you remove that fear like forget this job forget blah 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 i am going to say this and i'm going to stand up for myself i am going to write notes of this day you said this and i am going to keep notes and let you know i'm taking notes and i'm going to do whatever it is take these notes to the court hr whatever it is and I'm going to say it, but I'm going to let you know that I'm not going to be your victim. And I see with these people, when you stand up for yourself, that more respect happens because they see that you're not that same little person that's afraid of confrontation. You're looking them in the eye. You got your chest back. You're leaning your head in because that's how... I think it's Dan O'Connell for communication training online. He says, you have to do the bully language, chest back, head up, lean in, and let them know what it is that you don't like versus what you like. Because if you're all sheepish and, oh my God, oh my God, no, looking in, hey, it is not okay to treat me with disrespect. If you, if you haven't already done so, please like this video. Please share this on your social media. Share it with some friends that may be going through with some toxic people. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Again, thank you so much for hanging in here with me for two years. It's been real. Let me know your suggestions. Take care. Have a great weekend. Bye.